Hello and welcome. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and today we're going to learn how to play one of the world's most beloved traditional Christian hymns, Amazing Grace. This video tutorial is my super easy, what I call preparatory level tutorial, which means even if you're an absolute beginner with just a few months experience or even no experience at all, I will guide you step by step to be able to play this song. If you're looking for a more advanced tutorial where I show you how to play not just the melody but also chords and accompaniment, please check out my level 2 or level 4 Amazing Grace piano tutorials. All right, let's come to the piano to get started. So first off, let's find our position on the piano. Here's my middle C. So go ahead and find your middle C on your piano. Our left hand is only going to need to worry about these two notes. This note is G, this one's A. And I'd like you to use finger two and three. Remember, finger one is your thumb, so fingers two and three on A and G. Go ahead and get your left hand in position there. Your right hand only needs to worry about these four blue notes, and you'll use fingers one, two, three, and five on C, D, E, and G. So go ahead and make sure your hands are in this position. And let's go ahead and get started with the first two notes. You'll see the first note down here in the bass clef, which is G. So use finger three of your left hand to play that G. And then we come up to the right hand, finger one on C for amaze. Okay, now you try. Now, You'll notice the next two notes are both for the right hand, and we have an E with finger three, and then a C for amazing. Now you try. Good, now let's add one more note. After zing, then it comes back to E for grace. So all together we have G, C, E, C, E. Notice it just kind of rocks back and forth between C and E. Amazing grace. Now you try. Good. Now let's pause to notice something about music, and that's how rhythm is notated. You'll notice this first note is filled in in the middle. And that's called a quarter note. It lasts just one beat. It kind of has the sound as if you were walking. Ta, ta, ta. Has a nice slow and steady sound. Ta, and then this next note is called a half note. Which it, it's actually twice as long as a quarter note. So it's good to think two beats like this. You'll go ta, one, two. You can actually think one, two in your mind while you hold that. And if you don't do that, you won't hold that note long enough, generally. One, two, and then these two notes that are beamed together like that, that's called, these are called two eighth notes. And they're a little bit faster. They go about the speed of like if you were jogging, T T, jogging, jogging, or T T. So all together we have a quarter note, ta, one, two, T T, one, two. To play this song correctly, it's very important that you not just play the right notes, but that you have the right timing. So be sure to think about the rhythm. So what I'd like you to do is press pause and just work on this first phrase, paying attention to both the notes and the rhythms. Ta, one, two, ti, ti, one, two, for amazing grace. Press pause to practice that a little on your own, then press play to go on. Now after grace on E, it steps down to D, then down to C. For how sweet. Then it comes back to the left hand, the sound. So in letters we have D, C, A, G. Two notes for the right hand, two notes for the left hand. Now you try. Good. Now back to the beginning we have Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. 
Now, when you try putting all of that together, press pause to try that a few times on your own, then press play to go on. Now, the next phrase starts off the same way as the first phrase. G, C, E, C, E. And that's for that saved a wretch. And then it's a little different here. It steps down to D and then skips all the way up to G with finger five, which is your pinky. Like me. Okay, so together we get that saved a wretch like me. Press pause and work on that phrase on your own, then press play to go on. Now let's notice that me, the note we just played, actually is a new kind of rhythm that we haven't seen yet in this song. It's a dotted half note tied to a half note. Dotted half note is three beats, half note is two beats. So together we'll hold this note down for five beats. And again, that's very important when we, in a little while, when we play this with an accompaniment, or let's say you're playing along with a singer, you'd have to hold that note for the correct number of beats. So you might count one, two, three, one, two, or you could count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, either way, be sure to hold it for five beats, and then we go on. I once was lost. So here we're just going back and forth between E and G. E, G, E, G, E, C. For I once was lost. Just fingers three and five and one. Now you try. Good. Now let's try it one more time. I once was lost. Now you try. You might find it helpful to actually sing along as you play. That will help you remember the correct rhythm and the correct sound of the notes. Now the next phrase is but now. We're going down to the left hand with a G A. Now you try. Good, and then the right hand is going to play two C's, and then it comes back to the left hand for an A, G, for M found. So notice we have G, A in the left hand, then two C's, then A, G. Comes back down to G. But now am found. Now you try. Notice that on the word now, now, you actually have two notes on one syllable. But now, and then M also has two notes. Now M found. Okay? Now, you can always press pause if you need extra time to practice something. Otherwise, let's go back and put these two phrases together. So we have I once was lost, but now am found. Press pause and practice putting those two phrases together. I encourage you to sing along as you play, and then press play to go on. All right, here we are at the last phrase, which it so happens has the same notes as the first phrase. So we have was blind, but now I see, which is G, C, E, C, E, D, C, which again you'll hold for five beats, three plus two. Okay, now you try. Now that you know all of the phrases, 
Go ahead and press pause one more time to practice putting everything together from the start of the song all the way to the end, and then press play when you're ready to have me show you how you can play Amazing Grace along with a backing track. The accompaniment track that I'd like to uh, show you how to play along with is available for download from our website. So you can enjoy playing this song along with, we've got um, violin and cello and harp and flute put together on a track to make this even more beautiful. So first you'll hear an introduction and you'll just wait for that. And then you'll actually play through this three times. Uh, like we have three verses of the hymn. Uh, you'll play the same thing three times, but you'll notice the first verse starts kind of at a medium volume. The second verse brings it down to a, a very contemplative, quieter volume. And then the last verse, we're going to get more powerful uh, with more emotion, so you can really play out on that last verse. Okay, I'll demonstrate the whole thing. You're welcome to play along with me. Or you're welcome to just listen. Here's the backing track. And remember, there's an introduction, which you can just listen to as we get ready. And here's where we start. So you'll notice that when you're playing along with the accompaniment, it's so important that you hold those long notes, especially those notes that last for five beats. If you're not holding it for those five beats, you're going to get off from the accompaniment. So be sure inside you're counting one, two, three, four, five. Um, both there in the middle of the verse as well as the last note of each verse also being held for five beats. Thank you for learning Amazing Grace with me today. I hope you find peace and joy in playing this hymn, and I hope to see you again. Uh, Mr. Hoffman? Yes, Scuba? Uh, what's a wretch? Hmm. Well, a wretch is someone who feels wretched which means they don't have any hope. They feel terrible inside. But why? Because they feel worthless and unloved, unlovable. But no one is worthless. That's right, Scuba. But sometimes people make mistakes or certain things might happen to them that make them feel that way. Like there's just no hope for them. But grace is a powerful gift that can take someone who feels wretched and hopeless and it literally transforms them into someone who feels great love and joy. Wow, so how do you get grace? 
Well, let me tell you the story of the man who wrote the lyrics to Amazing Grace, and that might help you understand. Okay. The man was John Newton, and he was born in London, England in the year 1725. His mother died when he was only seven years old, and his father, who was a shipmaster, took him to sea to work on voyages from the time he was only 11. Gosh, sounds like a crummy childhood. Well, his young adult life only got worse. Before he was 20 years old, he had been captured at sea and forced to join the Royal Navy. When he tried to escape, he was captured again and whipped severely. Oh no. Soon after that, he transferred ships, only to end up in Africa as a mistreated and abused servant to a royal family. Poor guy. Well, fortunately, John's father, who by that time had retired from sailing, asked a sea captain to help search for his lost son. The sea captain found John, rescued him, and was bringing him home to England when a terrible storm struck off the coast of Ireland. John awoke in the middle of the night and saw water rushing into his boat. The ship was sinking, and John thought he was going to die. In that moment of distress, John called out in prayer to God. According to John's own account, at that moment, the cargo in the ship shifted in such a way to block the water from rushing in, and the ship was able to safely make it home. Wow! That day marked the beginning of John's conversion to Christianity. From that day forward, John started reading the Bible. He stopped drinking and gambling. Later in his life, he retired from sailing and actually became a minister. And eventually he worked to end the shameful slave trade of which he himself had participated in. Wow, that's a big change of heart. It certainly is. And that is the power of grace. John Newton certainly knew what it felt like to be wretched. And he truly felt that it was God's grace that had saved him and literally brought him safely home. Wow. Thanks for telling me that amazing story, Mr. Hoffman. Hey, amazing grace. It really is amazing. Yes, it is.